Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of the Working Paperless Training Series. In this video you will learn how to send documents via email to our customers, clients and colleagues for electronic signatures using ZipForm and DocuSign and a desktop computer. We will also get a chance to view the email that our clients receive so that you will have a better understanding of how electronic signatures work. I want to preface today's training by stating that our ZipForm and DocuSign accounts have already been activated and linked. Also, we have already created the transaction for our new client and filled out the documents as needed. If you are looking for information on activating and linking your zip form and DocuSign accounts, please refer to part one of this series titled Working Paperless Account Setup. If you're looking for information on creating new transactions, filling in documents, and what to do with the documents after you've created them, please refer to part two of this series titled Working Paperless The Basics. If you are looking for information on using ZipForm and DocuSign on smart devices such as tablets and smartphones, please refer to part four of this series titled Working Paperless Smart Devices. This video picks up where video two ends. We have just begun working with our new buyer, Elza Hayen, and we need to have her sign buyer agency agreement and some of the other forms within her transaction folder. It just so happens that Elza is out of town on vacation with no way to print or scan documents, but she can check her email. This sounds like a good job for DocuSign. The first thing that I need to do is open up Elza's transaction folder so that I can view all of the documents within it. Remember, we filled in all of these documents in the previous video. All we need to do now is email them for, to her for electronic signatures. So we're going to open Elza's transaction folder and we see all the documents within this folder. We need to click eSign to send some, some or all of these to her. The eSign button is right here. Clicking on eSign begins a three-step process to send out the documents. Step one is select the forms. You can send some or all of the documents within her folder. Since Elsa is just beginning, we're just beginning to work with her and signing her on her buyer agency, so we just need the first six documents so I'm going to click individually on the first six documents. If I wanted to select all, there is a button that says select all and I could choose that. After clicking the documents that we do need to send to her, we just need to click next. Now we're in step two of the transaction. In this screen we'll summarize all the parties listed in all of the documents within the transaction folder. You may see two buyers, two sellers on a contract, your name, the broker's name, even other agents names. You may not want to send the documents out to all of the parties listed. You must select who you want to send it out to and ensure that each recipient has an email address. As with selecting documents in the previous screen, you must select the parties by placing a green check mark next to the recipient's name. We also want to make sure that all the information is correct and I see that the email for me, the listing agent, or the buyer's agent is missing. So I will type in training at erawilderrealty.com. Also notice that this is not Elsa's email, this is another one of my emails. I would encourage you while you're practicing to put your email in place of, of a fictitious client's name so that you can see the email that they get, which we will do later in this video. After I have ensured that all of the information is correct and I've checked the two green check boxes or however many green check boxes, at the bottom we click done. Now we come to the second part of step two. On this screen we must double check that each person's information is correct and their email address is show, showing up. If something is incorrect, simply move the mouse cursor over the client's name. Notice that the bar changes colors and two small icons pop up over here. One looks like a pencil and one looks like a trash can. If we need to edit something, as we do here because the email didn't show up, we click the pencil which brings up a box and we can fill in the missing information. Training at ERA Water. And then hit save. 
and it's filled in. The next thing that we must do on the screen is to ensure that the order in which the clients receive the signature requests is correct. The emails are not sent out to everyone at the same time. Notice on the left hand side of the screen it says order one, two, and then it'll have more if there's more people. The party in position one receives the email first. Party number one must view and sign all documents before the email will then be sent to party number two and three and so forth. If a party does not sign the document, the process stops at that point. Let's say I want Elsa to receive it first and then me. To ensure she's in the number one position, we have to just click and hold and drag it above the other name. See how that is done? I'm clicking and dragging and just moving it. Just click and hold. Now that everything looks good, we will click Next from the upper right hand side of the screen. Now we are in the final step, step number three, adding signatures. What you may not realize is ZipForm just opened up DocuSign for us. We are now in DocuSign ready to mark on the documents where signatures and initials go. Look to the left side of the screen. Note the name up here is Elza Hayen. We are currently marking where Elza needs to initial and sign. Just below Elsa's name, we see tags. Tags are like little initial boxes, signature boxes, date stamp boxes. Just remember, they're kind of like the little sticky uh, sign here stickers with the arrows that we point, put on our paper document. We just need to pull these tags into the document where they belong. Before we begin placing tags into the correct positions, I want to start by pointing out the differences in optional tags. Notice signature versus optional signature over here on the left and initial versus optional initial. I would strongly suggest that you do not place optional tags into the documents. When a client is signing they may overlook the optional tags and the system will let them complete the signing process without ever having chosen any option that's optional. Here's how we can tell if a tag that is placed is optional or not. There's a regular initial box, and here is an optional initial box. I will zoom in, man. Now, as you can see down here, the, the optional has optional written under it. So if you see that, I would just suggest you click on it and hit the red X button that shows up to get rid of it. I also want to point out at this time how you can change the size of any kind of tag. When you click on the tag, this box shows up where you can exit out, close it out if you want, delete it, or over on the left side, you, you can barely see it, but there's a little slide. If you click, you can adjust the size of the tags. So we've placed this tag in the document for Elsa right here. We're going to scroll down to the next page, and we're going to continue placing tags within the document. That's a good spot. Signature. We're going to pull a signature box down and just place it on the line. We need a date sign box. We have that too. Date sign. We're going to go through the documents to the next one. This requires a signature and a date. Next page. Signature and date. We'll put some initial boxes in this document. We'll say she agrees to a home inspection and she's agreed to a home warranty. And we're going to have her sign that and date. Now to the contract. Notice I did not place these boxes down here. ZipForm tries to be helpful in DocuSign. They try to be helpful in placing tags where they believe they belong. Now what I will tell you is sometimes they place optional tags. Again you can click on the tag to increase its size to see if it says optional beneath it. This one does not. I already know from working with these documents that 
these at the bottom or not. But look here. It placed mandatory tags in all fields here. We don't need mandatory tags in all fields, so we need to delete some of them. I would delete the second or the first and third lines personally and just leave the mandatory signature boxes for the where I want my client to initial just like that and we've come to the end and it, they had the signature box proper now if there's another party which there is me it could be the other buyer client the spouse you never know you have to come to the top of the page up here and it says tags for we're going to switch it from Elsa Hayen to Buddy Rogerson as the buyer's agent there's only one place that I need to sign on these documents and they have already done it for me they placed Buddy Rogerson's signature box right here but notice how all of Elsa's are gray any place that Elsa was supposed to initial is gray the place for me is now you know is place tags for me in those proper locations so everything looks good here the document I will preview it you go through and just make sure that everything looks good I'm doing a very quick job of previewing and then after I finish previewing each page making sure that the initials and the signature boxes are in the proper spots all I have to do is click send once the box says thank you for using DocuSign you can now call your clients and tell them to check their email so that they can sign these forms which I will show you next now let's pretend that we are the client and we are in our email they will see an email just like this it says it's from Buddy Rogerson via DocuSign and it has their name right there as the subject if they click on the email you will see a really big ERA Wilder logo and just beneath it it'll say hello Elza Hayen Buddy Rogerson has sent you a new DocuSign document to view and sign please click on the view documents link below to begin signing you can tell your clients really they can't go wrong clicking everywhere that's this yellow or golden color so we're going to click the view documents and they will see this it says request for signature and it shows who it's from and the list of the documents but before they can begin signing they must click the box that says I consent to use electronic records and signatures once they click that they can click review documents and they see the forms that we've sent to them and the little initial boxes are right where we put them they can hit start and it will take them to the first box when they click on the initial it will ask them to adopt a signature it has their name Elsa Hayen and their initials EH they can just adopt what's here they can change if they don't like that one and they want to just pick something else but do note that there it makes no difference or they can draw if they want to try to draw their initials which you end up looking it's very hard to do with a mouse and you look like a kindergartner but let's say now nah, we don't want to do that let's just select a style select adopt an initial now it will put that signature and initial style in every one of these boxes as they click and they got overzealous and moved past a couple of them and they continue to click away on each of the tags and it's going to put a signature here now what will DocuSign do if they miss it brings them back up to the top so that they cannot miss any of the required boxes if there were anything optional in between two mandatory fields it will just kind of zoom like this right past it and they may inadvertently miss the optional initial and signature boxes now once they're done 
it will say all required fields complete. This box will not come up where they can confirm signing until they have clicked on every box, initial box or signature box within all the documents. So all they have to do is click confirm signing and they're done. It will now ask if they want to create an account with DocuSign. They do not have to. In fact, let's just not do that. It requires no account on their part to use DocuSign. Now that our client has signed the documents by DocuSign, let's go back into ZipForm and see where the documents end up. So we're going to log in to ZipForm. And now I want you to notice the silver circle that is next or that is within Elsa's box here. And notice Bubba Buyer does not have one. Sally does. Bubba never did sign his documents. Elsa has signed it and this silver circle signifies that the documents are sitting in her folder signed and as you can see this is new. This was not here sitting with all of our documents before. It says DocuSign signatures completed 14th of July. If we click on that we will see all six documents that we sent to Elsa originally, each of them, them being signed. Let's just open up one of them and look at that. And I'll zoom in to make it a little easier to see. Scroll down. And you can see where the broker I have signed and Elsa has signed with the date and time stamps in all the fields that we listed. This concludes part three of the Working Paperless training series, Working Paperless Electronic Signature. Everything is cool.